Hi, and welcome back to episode two. Today we're making cream puffs. As always, I'm Miss Emily, and welcome to Miss Emily's Kitchen. Cream puffs, if you may or may not know, are made using shoe pastry, which you can really use to kind of make whatever you want. You can do savory, you can do sweet, really up to you. You can do a cream puff, you can make eclairs out of it. My mom even takes that same basic recipe and hollows them out and fills it with chicken salad and makes little puffs. It's totally up to you. Well, let's take a look first at our ingredients. All right, so for the base of the cream puff, you're gonna need a half a cup of milk, two teaspoons of granulated sugar, a half a cup of water, four eggs, a cup of flour, a pinch of salt, and a half a cup of unsalted butter. Now to make the whipped cream filling, you'll need a cup of heavy whipping cream, two tablespoons of either powdered sugar or granulated sugar. I've gone with powdered sugar for today. And usually either a dash of vanilla extract, but I like to actually use a little secret ingredient and use some almond extract. Makes it taste really good, but be careful if you have anybody in your household with nut allergies, that would not be good. All right, so now that we have all of our ingredients done, let's take a look at our utensils. And now let's take a look at our utensils. First, you'll need a mixer or something to whip your cream with, a small saucepan, a baking sheet lined with parchment paper, either a couple gallon sized bags or a pastry bag, a spatula, a wooden spoon or something to stir your batter with, a fork or a whisk to whisk your eggs and a pair of scissors if you're using the gallon size bag instead of pastry bag. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do to make our shoe paste is crack four eggs into this bowl and beat them all together. And try as hard as you can not to get any shells in the mix. And of course, I already got one little one in, but that's okay. That's why we go slow and why we're not putting it right into the pot. I know some people can do this one-handed, but I am not one of them. Still working on it. All right, so four eggs. Size large if you can, but I'm sure a medium would work as well. Just nothing small. And I just use a fork for mine. All right, perfect. So we've got our eggs. We're gonna use these a little bit later. And now we're gonna move over to the stove top to start making our, our shoe paste dough. All right, so first we're gonna wanna heat our pan up to just about a medium heat. And we're gonna to wanna to add in our half a cup of milk, half a cup of water, our two teaspoons of sugar, our half a cup of unsalted butter. You can cut this into cubes or not, up to you. It might just take a little bit longer to melt, but that's okay. And then just a pinch of salt. I use about that much. All right, so we're gonna wanna heat this up until the butter melts. It might take just a couple minutes. All right, so let's check in on our butter. Looks like it's all melted and it's just started bubbling a little bit, which is perfect. We wanna get it to where it's scalding, so you're not boiling your milk, but it's just barely there, which is great. So now that you can kinda of see some little bubbles in. We're going to add in our cup of flour and it's going to form one big ball in the pan. It's going to look kind of gross at this point. So once you get that all mixed together, we're going to let this just kind of sit and cook for about a minute just to cook out that flour taste because otherwise your whole dish is going to taste like raw flour and that is not good. So just keep stirring so it doesn't burn. All right, so now that we've cooked out a lot of the flour taste, we've taken it off the heat. We just kind of let it sit here for a little bit to cool down. You can still see a little steam coming off it, but that's okay. This is the base of our shoe paste dough. And now we've got it off the heat. We're gonna start slowly adding in a little bit of our four beaten eggs, just a little bit at a time and make sure to keep stirring. We don't want those eggs to cook and make like scrambled eggs. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit. 
Now you can use an electric mixer for this, but I always just do it by hand. Because if you don't need all four of your eggs, you don't have to use them. And so just keep stirring. And once it's all combined, you can add some more. What's nice is you can use this dough to make really just about anything. You can even deep fry it and make like churros or little donuts. So versatile. Oh yeah, getting that forearm strength. We're going to end up kneading all four of our eggs. Maybe I should have used the electric mixer today. And the last little bit. And if your dough is still kind of thick, like you can see mine is, you can even add a fifth egg in. That's definitely up to you because you're going to want it to kind of run off the spoon and mine's still a little thick. So we're going to go grab one more egg and be right back. All right, so now that we finished mixing in all of our eggs, you should have a dough that looks kind of like this. It's kind of thick and sticky. It's still sticking to the spoon, but it's, oh, it's almost like a really thick paste. Now at this point, if you wanted to transfer it into a piping bag, just to be a little more fancy, you definitely can. I'm just gonna use a couple spoons and dollop it on. So we've got our parchment lined baking sheet and really, you know, as many baking sheets as you need to use up all your batter. I'm just doing a small one for now because I'm gonna make a couple, and maybe make a couple later on. So you're gonna wanna take, oh, about a scoop that size, make it nice and rounded with your two spoons and just gently drop it on. Now, if you're having an issue with your parchment paper, it doesn't want to stick to your pan, you can always take a little bit of your extra dough and just stick it under the corners. But I'm not too worried about ours today. All right, so just kind of make it around like a little ball. Sizes don't really matter. You can honestly make these almost like giant softballs I've seen. Just means more filling but I kind of like little bite-sized ones because they're easier to eat. That's why I'm using the smaller spoons instead of something bigger. Now really, you just want to make sure you don't have any weird points coming up because they will burn in the oven. But other than that, shape doesn't really matter as long as they're somewhat round because they'll puff up all on their own and look just gorgeous. I think we're probably going to get about let's see, maybe eight on this tray. You don't want to put them too close together because they will spread out a little bit. You just want to make sure they each have enough room. All right. And if you do see that you have some little edges coming out, just kind of take your finger. If you need to dip it in some water too, no problem but just kind of use it to shape them a little bit if you need to kind of tuck in some of these rough edges. If you use your piping bag, they'll come out a little bit fancier looking, but I kind of like the homemade look. All right. So now that these are all on our tray, you could choose to take an egg wash, just a little egg and a little water and brush it on top to kind of give it a glossy shine, but I'd rather have mine just straight as is. So now we're going to take these and pop them into our oven, which we've been preheating to 400 degrees. Now they're just going to go in the oven. 
and we'll check on them in about 15 minutes. They'll usually go about 15 to 20. We just want them to be a light golden brown on top. So we'll be back in after that. All right, so our cream puffs have been in the oven at 400 degrees for 20 minutes, and then we lowered the temperature down to 350 and cooked it for an additional 10 minutes. You can go 10 to 15, depending on how long it takes your cream puffs to brown and how big they are. Mine were little, so 10 minutes was perfect. So I'll pop these out. You wanna make sure not to open the oven door before they're done, otherwise they won't puff up as much. But you can see they've all gotten a little bit bigger. All right, so now we're gonna set these off to the side to cool. And while they're cooling, we're gonna work on our homemade whipped cream. Now you can buy whipped cream from the store, but this tastes so much better and it's so easy. So we're just gonna add a cup of very cold, heavy whipping cream to the bowl of our stand mixer. You can also use a hand mixer or you can whisk it by hand if you're feeling really strong. All right, you can even chill your bowl if you're worried about it, but as long as your cream is really cold, that's all that matters. So I'm gonna turn this, put that down and lock it in place. We're gonna turn it up to about an eight on the KitchenAid. Um, otherwise, it's gonna be like a medium, medium, high speed. So make sure your bowl's locked and turn it up. And we're gonna be whipping it until it forms some stiff peaks. I'll show you when we get to that point. All right, so our cream's been going for about a couple minutes. And so now we're gonna check on it and see if we're at the point we want it to be. It was running on about a high speed, so you can test it. You just take the end of your whisk, swirl it around, and then pull it straight out, flip it over. And if your peaks kind of hold up on their own, I'll show you again, just like that. Otherwise, it'll kind of fall over. At this point, it's not sweet yet. So we've got to add our sugar. We'll put the attachment back on. All right. We'll add, let's see, two tablespoons confectioner sugar, or you can use um, just granulated sugar too. Up to you. I like this because it mixes in a little more smoothly. And then I'm adding my secret ingredient, which is some almond extract. It is potent stuff, so you really just want to do maybe like a quarter teaspoon at most. I'm just going to do a little splash or you can use vanilla, totally up to you. Really, if you wanna use any other flavoring, like a lemon, mint, really anything, it'd probably taste good in here. All right, so we're gonna mix this in real quick. All right, should be good, give it a little taste. Homemade whipped cream is so much better than anything you're gonna get at the store. All right, so take that off and pop that off the base. And our cream puffs have been cooling for a little while, so we'll open one up and show you. So you can choose to cut them, you can just pull them apart, but you're kind of looking for a really soft, eggy center, not too wet in the middle. And really, you just wanna make sure that it's dry all around the edges. Some people actually like to pull out the excess so you have more room for filling. I don't really mind either way. So I'm just gonna open a few of these and just kind of pop them with your fingers just so we can fill them. Now really, the bigger these are, the more filling you get, so it's really up to you how big you wanna make them to start with. But I just like to be able to pop them in whole. All right, so now we've got a couple opened up. We're gonna pipe in some of our whipped cream. If you don't have a fancy piping bag, you can just use a big gallon size bag. Open it up, kind of fold over the outside lip. And you're just gonna, everything's gonna be going down into this tip here. Kind of get it open. You can even drape this over the side of a glass if that's easier for you. I'm just gonna scoop in some of our homemade whipped cream. Don't need a lot, because I didn't make a ton of cream puffs, but up to you. All right, we're just kind of gonna push this all the way to the bottom. 
and take our scissors and just snip off this little tip, just a little bit, just so you've got a little coming through. And go to one of our puffs, take your bottom half and add as much filling as you want. If you want to overstuff them, that's okay, because they will still be delicious. Now, some people like to put jam in here too, or like a nice lemon curd. All very good ideas. All right, so we got a couple piped. And the nice part is you don't have to be fancy about your piping technique, because you're not even going to see it. All right. So that's actually it for our cream puffs. They're pretty easy. We're going to actually try one because they're still get that cream oozing out the sides. This is why I like the little ones because you don't have to take a big giant bite. Mm. It is so good and it's not too sweet, which is one of my favorite things for desserts. Best part about all this ingredients to make it under 10 bucks, really basics that you probably already have in your kitchen, like some flour, some sugar, eggs. I mean, the most expensive thing you're buying is some heavy cream, which is at most like $2 for a cup. Not bad at all. All right, well, now that we're done with our cream puffs, thank you guys so much for watching. For all my YouTube followers, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Anybody following on Facebook, make sure to like it and share with your friends and family. This has been Miss Emily's Kitchen. I'm Miss Emily. Thanks so much for watching.